This meeting is being recorded. Hi, this is Anne with an anagram on this week two coding exercise in particular, and I hope some hints to make you more effective in Cloud9 using C++ in general. Uh, one thing to note is this is my demo machine, and my folder structure here on the left is not going to match the required folder structure you have. Uh, but in any case, I'm starting here with the main.0 that you will have as a starter file. It has um, two errors in it that will keep it from compiling and running. I'm going to hit the run button here and see the errors that come out. And um, one thing you'll notice is that the error list you get starts down here at line 44. That's the first error you see when it's done compiling. But that's not where you want to start looking at errors and fixing. What you want to do is always, when you're looking at compiler and linker errors, you always want to go to the top and start fixing problems as close to the top of this list as you can understand them so that um, an error fixed near the top of your file will often eliminate an enormous number of, of errors down below. And that's true in this case in particular. Um, I can guarantee you that you have to change one character and add one file, one line, and then all your compiler errors will go away and you'll only have a runtime error to fix. So um, you really do want to go to the top of this list of errors, look at line two, and um, and pay attention. Sometimes the errors are helpful, and sometimes they seem very confusing. So you want to start at the top, see if you can understand something, fix one problem, compile again. Don't try to fix a whole lot of problems before you compile again. Compiling is cheap. Your time is valuable. And remember that sometimes you'll get an error here and the problem will be above it because the first error that's reported is when the compiler is already confused by this line. I'm going to pause the, re the recording now um, with, oh, one quick note, um, two quick notes before I pause the recording and fix these problems. Um, you can use any syntax theme you want in um, Cloud9. And um, they really are a matter of personal preference. The one thing that I would lobby for with my Vibrant Ink theme is, um, oh, I didn't mean to change that. <laughs> Hang on, let me go back to Vibrant Ink. OK, is that comments are very visible in my theme. And you will find that the comments in my programs and the comments I require you to write are important. And so um, I urge you to find a theme where the comments really stand out. The other thing is, in case you didn't take advantage of this in a previous course, one of the reasons I use this rather odd naming convention when I give you starter files is that there is a duplicate button here in the context menu. And if I just click duplicate, I end up with the file that in this case you should start making your changes in. So I will give you a dot zero, duplicate it, make it make your changes and run them in the dot one version. And then when you go to actually change the code, you'll duplicate again to get a dot two version. Okay, pausing now. This meeting is being recorded. Okay. I've gone through and copied main.0 to main.1, fixed the compiler and runtime errors there, and I now have a working version of this code in a file called main.2.cpp, and I'm supposed to be starting to make the changes where instead of having hard-coded values like this, and notice this value shows up twice in the output, I, use, I substitute variable names. So I'm going to go through, show you how I proceed, show you a couple of errors that you're likely to run into, um, and, um, and basically try and give you a little bit of a turbo boost um, through this exercise. So um, first of all, if I run this code, this console window pops up. Um, if for some reason it ever does not pop up and you want it to, 
then remember that you can go here and if it's not showing, this won't have a check and you can just check it and that window will pop up. But it does pop up when we're asking for user input. And so I can enter a username um, and in this case, I'll just put my own name without the correct capitalization because we know that it's not going to show up in the output anyway. And then the code is going to ask me um, several questions. And I'd like you to go through and do this the correct way at least once where you answer each of the questions. But I will give you um, a testing turbo boost here in that um, it, is, it is a defect you will run into. So um, I will go ahead and show you because it's a defect, well not a defect, it's a feature that you can take advantage of. The, the um, instructions are quite explicit about the fact that you, every answer here has to be a single word. Um, but sometimes, particularly, you know, on the Yellowstone Park or whatever the name of your park is, you'll be tempted to type in two words. If you do ever type in two words, okay, what happens is it, the, the code that is pulling this into the buffer to assign those two variables ends up taking in two answers. And so what happens is the next prompt here gets printed out, and it's actually already being answered by this word, and so then the prompt after that. And one of the things you can do if you're just in the early stages of testing this code is you can take advantage of that by just typing in several answers at a time and getting, and getting the code to run on through. So let me just show you that again. If I run it, and all I'm trying to do is say, uh, work with the first name, the, the first variable. Oh, yeah, and I have to click on this space. I can't just start typing after this appears. I actually have to click down here in order for my input to be taken. So I can answer the first question, say if I'm going to be working on the first variable, and then I can do, few more and um, just get through that input so as you, because what I'm going to urge you to do is work in baby steps I think it's really important as you're getting used to coding C++ in particular that you get used to compiling and running just every single line or even or couple of lines or few lines the biggest problem you can create for yourself is to change a whole lot of code, try to run it, have none of it work, and you have no clue where to start fixing it. So really, baby steps are the key to success here. Um, go slow to go fast. Um, I, want to, I want to go in here, and any place where solo is appearing in the output, I want to replace that with a variable last name. So the easiest thing for you to do the most likely error for you to make is this. I just said replace solo with last name. So I take the name of this variable and I replace solo with it. And if I run my code, it compiles and runs just fine. And if I hit the space bar, it compiles and runs again. If I, I have to click down here and then I can start typing Um, and what you'll see in the output is that I'm not getting what I typed in for that variable. I'm getting the variable name. And that's because the variable names don't belong in quotes. That's the point of a variable name is that it's in substitute to the whole string. So what I want to do when I'm putting variables in, in place of hard-coded strings, is I want to use the name of the variable to replace the whole string, which includes the quotes. So now if I run this code, I click down here, I type a reasonable answer for the first name, and I type what I always end up typing, which is Yellowstone Park, 
I'll be reminded that that actually is two words, so it answers two questions. So I decide to give up and just type in some nonsense for the things that I'm not clearly testing yet. Um, looks like I got a couple verbs. Okay, and now when I run my when I run my code, I see that I'm seeing gun in the output in both of the places where solo was appearing before. And um, it's going to seem a little ridiculous to you, but I do urge you to take each of these variables and replace it in the output one at a time and compile and run after each one. And then remember that the last time you test this, you need to test it like a legitimate little Mad Libs where you type in a reasonable but slightly wacky value for each um, word that it asks. And let me just remind you that snake case can be your friend here. So for example, um, if I had a, uh, I don't know, if, I, if this was an input for a first and last name and I wanted to type and gun, I can use snake case and in the output at least for sad libs that'll look enough like a two word answer you can't get an actual two word answer in for these variables because of the because of the idiosyncrasies of the kind of c plus plus input we're using but you can get something that looks enough like it that you can um, have a golden marmot, for example, as one of your animals. Hope that helps.